previously on Flowers for Zoe, Stories for Dennis. The questions that we ask and the way that we frame these questions can be activating. We don't have to spend all of our time on the most traumatic details of events because that's not the whole story of a person. I never want to forget those times because I never want to forget how horrible it was. Seeing Zoe being treated that way, oh, it just made me so angry. And I really want to change that. And I know the best way to change that is to tell Zoe's story. Let people experience that as best as you can. As best as you can, get into detail. On today's podcast, we talk about feeling all the feels. If you feel activated by anything on today's podcast, don't forget to reach out and talk to somebody. Yeah. So tonight's topic is feeling all the feels. Yes. (laughs) I know. I was, when Laura said this to me yesterday, I'm like, what, what does that mean? Feeling all the feels. Feeling all the feels is basically that experience of mixed emotions. It's feeling all the feels is feeling all of it and letting ourselves feel what we feel. It's just life that we're feeling when we're feeling things, you know, it's sometimes we can fall into the trap of believing that there's good emotions and not so good emotions, right? We can fall into the trap of like, oh, things are okay. If I'm feeling happy, things are okay. If, you know, there's joy in my life and I'm having fun and, you know, and, and, and I'm feeling good, right. I'm feeling loving feelings or, you know, I'm feeling, you know, kindness or I'm feeling friendly, you know, like those descriptors, sometimes we can fall into that trap of thinking that, you know, there's these positive feelings and that we're doing all right. So long as those are the feelings that we're having, when in reality, there are a whole lot of feelings. Um, There's primary emotions, and then there's all kinds of, you know, other emotions that fall under those primary emotions. Right. But we can feel all kinds of things. And it's important that we feel what we feel. Some would say Um, it doesn't mean we can always trust our feelings. Sometimes our feelings are just indicators of how we are doing in our environment. Right. So when something in our environment happens and we get activated by it and we're feeling angry or frustrated or sad, those are also important feelings. And we got to feel those feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if we can feel them, if we can notice them, then we can decide what to do about them. We can either let those feelings just be feelings. And we might just say, hey, you know, I'm witnessing my emotions. Uh, We can actually start to be a little bit compassionate with ourselves because we can recognize, oh, I'm just feeling this uncomfortable feeling. Right? Mm -hmm. So feeling all the feels is this idea that you know, we want to be able to feel all of it. And sometimes what that means is we have to allow ourselves to feel things even that feel uncomfortable. So what kind of feelings have you had lately, Zoe? I know some of them. So what are you, maybe you can, uh, you can take a guess at those and uh, well, then I'll correct you if you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe's been juggling so much and there's just more and more pins being added to her pile of juggling and yeah some of it is overwhelming you see it yeah yeah there's stress there there's frustration a little bit of anger but then there's happiness and there's you know there's all those good feelings that kind of balance out um the frustration and the uh the anxiety and the stress you know so it's it's a balance right now how do you feel about your anxiety i've always wanted to talk about anxiety but anxiety that you experienced today how is that different than the anxiety you you experienced four months ago Mm. 
Do you ever compare them? Not, not necessarily out of nowhere, no. But I guess thinking about it now, it's kind of different. Because I just don't have the same worries, right? Like The stakes are different, aren't they? Yeah. Now your stakes right. are pretty good. Yeah, like now my, my worries are about going to school and, you know, how I'm going to juggle everything else around that and, you know, like yeah. dealing with my kids again and and just the worries are different now. They're not the same, you know. Yeah. I don't have the same worries. So you, worry, you worry a lot about having a clean home. Yes, which before that was not even in question. Like I had, I couldn't worry yes. about that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, part of tonight is checking in with you um, because you are on this recovery journey. Um, checking in to see how are you doing? What's been going well? What's not been going well? Mm. And maybe like, what do you need? I don't know. Everything is going okay. Uh, dealing with my mom is just a little bit difficult right now. She's uh, she's just going through a lot of change, right? Oh, it's. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to go. I'm. I would like to think I'm trying to go as slow as I can go. <laughs> Let's talk. Well, what Zoe's talking about. Correct me if I'm wrong, Zoe, but you basically have your kids back yeah they're living with you and they have been for six weeks yeah going on two months yeah going on two months and oh my god that's that was one of your goals six months ago mm -hmm. and um yeah you're doing it now but on the opposite end your mother has gone through a bit of a loss not a bit of a loss. She's gone through a loss. Yeah. It was the mother of these two amazing little girls for five years. How long? Yeah, like five years. Five years. So she's kind of suffering a loss and she's going through some other things too that are kind of compounding that. Yeah. And this is one of the problems that you're facing right now. Yeah. So it's not, they're not all good problems. Some of them are pretty serious, right? Yeah. Very serious. Yeah, it's just hard. I don't, I don't want to, her to feel like I'm taking everything away from her, but I need her to understand that I, I want my kids back. And I think she does understand that she's just having a hard time working through that. So I'm trying to, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'd like to think that I'm going as slow as that, as slow as I can possibly go with this transition. But I don't want to go any slower than this because then it's kind of a step back again for me. And I don't want to take any steps back. Right. I need to keep going forward. Yeah. But I don't want to hurt my mom. And I keep and just trying to tell her that it's not she's not losing her grandkids she's just gaining her daughter back now and she still feels that it's a loss and um, it's just hard it's just really hard and you know just to put this in perspective I you know I understand how you feel I myself have two daughters and I haven't seen them in eight years yeah right so six months ago you were like 99% certain there was no happy ending to this scenario of you and your kids with custody. You and right. believed you're going to lose them one way or another. Mm -hmm. And having them back right now just means the world to you. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It does. I understand that fear of losing your kids. I totally get it. It's massive. Yeah. I like and what I felt for 
you know, of course, my being my fault, the decisions that I've made and putting things before my kids, that feeling of, of losing my kids and not having them, I don't want to put that on my mom. I don't want to make her feel like she's losing them. Yeah. You know, because it hurts, right? You, yeah. It does. And I don't. And I, I don't. And you, you're, you're like, you're so positive about that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely positive that this is not a step back for your mom, but a step forward. Yeah. And you feel really good about that. You have a plan on how to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, and you're very proactive with it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you're, a, you're 100% sure that this is going to work. Yeah. There's nothing that's going to get in that way and stop it. No, not at all. So how are you guys, how are you guys making this transition happen? Like what kinds of things are happening to, you know, ease your mom into these changes and ease yourself into these changes? Yeah. Cause that's also what I said to her too. When I spoke with her, like, I get that it's a huge change for you, mom, but it's also a huge change for me. I have to learn mm-hmm. how to be a full-time mom again. And it's not going to be easy. I need your help. Like, I can't do this alone. Mm. You know, I I need you. And like, I need you more than you realize, you know, when I when I start going back to school, and, you know, I I need time to study, I need time to do these things. And it's going to be really hard having to do all this and, and be there a hundred percent for my kids at their beck and call for everything that they need. It's going to be hard. I can't do it by myself. So it really is a partnership then. Hey, yeah. But she's not looking at it like that right now. She's just, uh, she, she feels that my kids don't want to go back to her house and they want to stay with me, which is true. They do. But what I'm trying to explain to her is that they just got me back after not having me for five years, of course they want to stay with me. Of course they want to be there. You know, they they don't want to go home. And like, I'm sure they still have in the back of their head, they're just waiting for the other two to drop. Like they, you know, my mom has been my kid's safe space for five years. That has been their solid ground. That has been, you know, their protection for five years and with me I'm I'm kind of a wild card they don't know when or if the other shoe is going to drop all I've been doing was is trying to you know gain their trust and and help them work through the fact that I'm I'm not going anywhere again but I'm sure it's in the back of their head still and my mom is still their safe space she's she's um consistent right she's been consistent she's been there I don't want her to feel like she's losing the kids because in that case my kids are going to feel like they're losing her in a sense and I don't want that so you have yeah. worries around this whole thing you really do eh? yeah well I'm also hearing that you have a lot of insight you have a lot of insight you, you're you know, as, as you're describing this, I hear, you know, there's empathy for your mom. There's insight around the experience that your kids have had. Um, you've got this awareness of, you know, how they may be processing this or, you know, what they may be expecting. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to sit with all that insight because like you said, it doesn't mean that things move quickly. You just have this insight. And so you may be going into each day, you know, doing the best you can, right? And there might be a lot of big feelings around that. There might be a lot of dynamics around this transition. So you're going to be feeling all kinds of things. And maybe they're all the right feelings to be feeling as you guys are navigating all of this stuff. Yeah. So question. What does Zoe do with all these feelings? Well, frustration, the anticipation, the anxiousness. As we all know, I'm not taking any more pills ever again. So that's out of the question. Just saying. Right. Yeah. Well, 
and I don't I don't know what Zoe does about this. I I kind of think Zoe is doing it. She's just described, right? I I want to ask, okay, how can we support you? What do you need? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I Your just... chance, so come on, make it a good one. <laughs> what do you need? What what can I do to help you tomorrow? Clean the cat litter. <laughs> you got it. I'm editing that out, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so sometimes practical support really helps. Sometimes yeah. practical support just takes some of the weightiness off of that feeling like all of these things have to get done. I know where you need some extra help, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll man up, get out a bit. I will. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But the kids too, like I, I need to put up that chore chart because, you know, like there's certain things, like I don't expect them to scrub the walls and, you know, or, or see little things that I see that bother me, like the dust in the vent. Like I don't expect that. So a part of you guys adjusting to life altogether is figuring out how to live together. And figuring out, you know, how the kids are going to participate, how everybody's going to, you know, tidy up after themselves. Yeah. Um, and, and how you're parenting, you're parenting them and, and, and doing this while and transitioning. It's a big change right now, but like mm -hmm. in general, I, I can't, I'm just not a person to live with another person. And I can live with Uncle Daniel. I can. Like, mm -hmm. it just works, you know? Like, yeah, there's little things here and there, but it does work. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I mean, it's a good thing. I, I think so anyways. I, I hope I hope Uncle Daniel feels the same. Oh, I feel I hope, exactly the same. I, I hope I'm kidding? not getting under your skin too much. Never. <laughs> you never get under my skin, Zoe. Well, today, today you did when you were late for the meeting. Yeah. Other than that, nothing. Do you get time? <laughs> I know you have your reasons. No, I feel yeah. the same way, Zoe. I feel, okay. I love it. I yeah. hope so. Because yeah. I become a bitch sometimes. But not towards you, just no, in, in general. Me. Yeah, never. Yeah. I don't, uh, I, I don't think I mean to anybody in specific like that. I just... I get frustrated in my own little bubble, you know? Yeah. And I, bubble's big. Yeah. I have a uh, big bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Are you getting time for yourself to focus on your personal things? No. Do you feel I, like there's things that you want to be able to put attention on? Like, do you feel like there's anything missing that you need more of when it comes to that? Yeah, I still need to deal with um, my own mental state, right? Like, I, I, I need to, um, I don't know what I need to do. I just know that I need to deal with my feelings still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you, you working with the program in the morning? Um, yeah, kind of, but I have to go in person to see Rose because of how much time I've missed. Mm -hmm. So I need to see her in person before I can continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with everything that was going on with my mom and shit for those few days I missed and then she emailed me and she's like, hey, before we can continue, I got to talk to you in person and figure out stuff with you because mm -hmm. I've been really putting my my own stuff like my personally like personal own stuff on the back burner mm -hmm. so okay so what would you like to do uh, but even I feel with the podcast like it's now on the back burner and I don't want it to be like you know when it comes to my my 
um, with Vita Nova and the podcast, this is all a part of my recovery, which should be on the front burner. And it's not right now with everything that is happening. A lot of it has to do, like I said, with my mom, right? And, and dealing with her shit and the change that's happening with the kids and her. And I'm not focusing on the 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 main main things that I should be right now because I'm so the day to day time okay so the day to day feels really full yeah and just being in the present with the kids with your mom with cleaning with you know being doing life it yeah. feels it's taking up a lot of time and then what happens is some of these other things that you want to focus on like your own wellness um and having that time to, to work on that kind of fall to the side. Yeah. Cause these other things feel like they, you know, they're overbearing almost. They're so right in my fucking face mm-hmm. that I, I have a hard time focusing on anything else. Mm-hmm. Like you know, even- sometimes there's this idea that we're supposed to be balanced. Right. And it can add a lot of pressure if we think we're supposed to be balanced or that being balanced is achievable all the time. When the reality is sometimes in life, it's really imbalanced. So in other words, you know, all of this is really new and the kids are home and your mom's there and there's lots going on. Maybe it is going to be a little imbalanced. Yeah. Right. So if we, so if we accept that and say, okay, it's going to be in balance, it's going to be really challenging to carve out that time. Um, then at least we know what we're up against, mm-hmm. right? It's not like you're doing anything wrong. You're really putting all your attention into being there with the kids and your mom. So the mm-hmm. challenge is, okay, how are we going to support you with carving out that extra bit of time? So you get that me time. So you get the time to focus on the program and all those important things that, um, that you want to be able to continue doing. So maybe we talk about that. How do we support you to make sure that you get that little bit of time? Mm -hmm. So the kids get more, but you get a little bit. Yeah. Right. Recognizing that, okay, you're a mom, it's busy. We can't, we're not going to change anything about that. That's just a fact. Yeah. Right. Having young kids and it's summertime, it is going to be imbalanced, Mm -hmm. but how do we carve out? How do we make sure you get that bit of time that you need every day? Yeah. I got to figure that out. So let's, let's talk about Vita Nova. How are you feeling about it? How important does it feel to you? I mean, I know it's important. I just, even when I'm in program late or when I was, because now I'm not because she has to talk to me face to face. Mm -hmm. But even when I was, I just, I wasn't giving it my 100% attention. Say something about that. What's, What's going on? Do you like the program? Do you like the material or what else? What else might be going on? it's a great program mm-hmm. it's 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 really helpful they really they genuinely care about the people who attend you know mm-hmm. they want to help people mm-hmm. i just my attention just wasn't in it and i don't know why so you were noticing that that you were distracted and just not yeah focusing and yeah and if I you know and then that's what made me start thinking like I'm not the type of person to do something if I'm not putting my all into it Mm -hmm. what's the point of it Mm. in a sense right I could get a lot of good things out of this program I can Mm -hmm. I just I'm struggling between like if this is the program and what they're talking about is what I need, because I see all these people that are giving it their 100% and they're getting so much out of it. And even when I'm there and I'm sitting through these classes, not that I'm a know-it-all, but it's like everything that they're stating, 
I know I have to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm practicing self-awareness and I'm I, I do that on a daily myself, right? Like mm -hmm. self-awareness and self-reflection and, 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 and forgiveness. And like, uh, like I, I practice those things on a regular myself. Mm -hmm. So sitting in class to hear that, I'm sure if, I'm sure, like I said, there's a lot of that I can get out of it. And I'm not trying to think that I'm a know-it-all, but I just, I'm not interested in, I don't know if, because I find other things are just more important right now. I'm just, I'm so just uninterested I, I, in it. It's I really think that's what it is, So I think you've had this plans from day one to be with your kids and now you're here and that's mm -hmm. a lot of shit to do as mom. Yeah. Maybe that's what you should be doing. I just feel like it, that was a part of my plan though, right? Is to go to rehab. But at this point, I feel like my rehab is what I'm doing. Like this, this is my rehab. I don't need to sit there and listen to drugs are bad. Don't fall back into drugs because I know this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to do that. That's mm -hmm. not, you know, that's not even on my map, you know, not even the mm -hmm. farthest away fucking continents, you know, oh. like that's not even there. So maybe, maybe there's a little piece of this that's about trusting yourself. So when you make these statements and you say, look, I don't want to use substances. I, you know, I, I don't want to do this route. It, it, I get this sense that the life that you're creating right now that you're working on is the bigger piece mm -hmm. and you're focusing on it and it's good. And like you said, it's part of your recovery journey is being in your life um, and and just carrying on with the day and all the things in the day. Yeah. And that part is like, how would you describe that? What does it give you when you're, and I know we've talked a lot about frustrations and stuff, but yeah. if you were to just sort of like, if I were to ask you to just kind of like close your eyes and think about the fact that you're in the day with the kids, doing all these important things in the house, keeping things clean, going swimming with them, being in their life, like, what does that give you? a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. yeah okay like when I when I lay down at night and I think about my day I feel accomplished I feel like I got everything done that I wanted to get done today mm -hmm. I was able to I'm able to go to sleep with a clean house I can wake up and turn my coffee on and be happy about where I live and where I am and that I know my kids are sleeping and they're going to be up soon. And, you know, I was able to take them swimming today and I feel accomplished. I feel I'm actually proud of what my day was and I'm, I don't have negative thoughts about it. I feel positive about it. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So this is part of your recovery journey. And this is you trusting yourself and putting yourself, you know, putting your focus and attention on the things that have you feeling good. They're the things that have you feeling like you're accomplishing things and you're, you're, you know, you're where you want to be. Yeah. Right. So when we know where we want to be, like, think about when you know where you don't want to be, when something doesn't feel right and you know it doesn't feel right mm -hmm. and you don't want to be there. I know that feeling all too well. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, yeah, this feeling is so different. This is the complete opposite of yeah. negative. You know, it's, yeah. um, it's a, I'm, I'm at a, a good place. I'm not at the best place. You know, there's more for me to, to still accomplish and to still do and to still work on, but I feel good where I am. So maybe the question is, what then, if anything, do you need to support you as a person? Like, yes, you're a mom. Um, you're also just a person in the world, right? These are interconnected things. But what, if anything, um, do you need? Is it a smaller group? Is it, is it something that won't 
you know, that, that could still be there for you, but won't be as labor intensive? Um, is it having a different kind of support? Because not everybody needs the same thing. Right. And, um, and we've talked about that, right? Um, everybody has their own, everybody needs their own tailored program. Right. And you're creating a program for yourself, just in your life. So, you know, is there a place for Vita Nova or that type of material or a different kind of support program? How much time could you carve out in your day to make, you know, how much, how much time in your day could you carve out and say, this is also important. It's important for me, for my wellness, for my recovery. It's what, it's that other little piece that's going to kind of support me so I can be in my life doing all this good stuff. I don't know what I need though. I'm so like, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what would help better my day to day right now. I don't know. I'm kind mm -hmm. of lost on that question. I don't know. Yeah. So maybe this is a good conversation to have with, um, with Vita Nova. I think it's great that they've said, come on in and let's talk about it. Cause yeah. maybe this is something to explore and maybe they can help with what some of the options are. Yeah. I guess what I want to also just say is I don't think this has to, it's not a negative thing. Right. Doesn't have to be a negative thing. Just like personally, what I'm going through with not understanding why I'm putting my my uh, my rehab portion of my recovery on the back burner, or why I'm so uninterested. Like I don't want that to fall back on anybody who's listening because rehab is great. Like it is, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing the support that you get and, and it's an amazing thing to do for yourself because you need to be doing for yourself, like at all times, you need something to focus on for just you that doesn't involve anybody else or anything else, only yourself. You need that, right? I'm just like, personally, I'm just, this is just a personal struggle that I haven't figured out yet. So I, I don't want it to reflect on anybody else's recovery that's listening, you know? I, I, I do believe that re like rehab is very important in, in recovery. And I believe that everybody should, should take that time for themselves and do it because it's really beneficial for, for you in that sense. I'm just, I'm, I'm stuck in a, in something that I don't quite understand, right? I'm still trying to figure out why, why I'm feeling the way I feel about this rehab program right now. I don't understand it myself. So. Well, that was really nicely said, Zoe. I think you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a really important message, right? Yeah it is it is important i like it's so beneficial like it's so needed you know and and i did a portion of my rehab with them and it was great i did get a lot out of it but right now like i said i'm i'm going through just a little phase that i don't don't quite understand right it could be that i have a lot of other things going on that i feel is maybe a little bit more important and it's kind of needs more of my attention right now but um I used to read a lot before and I haven't even done that lately so maybe that's something that I could kind of bring back into the picture for myself and I can take that you know hour at night instead of turning on the tv and do that for me right because I need to find something to do for myself and like I said only me that has nothing to do with anybody mm -hmm. else or anything else I need that oh. hour to myself whether that's reading or writing or my program, like I need to do something. 
time. I need to make time Is that to hard do that to for do? myself. Even if it's kind of, because like I said, by the time I'm done with everything, I'm just exhausted, mm-hmm. right? So I just need to. So how do you feel about, how do you feel about experimenting with that? How do you feel about giving yourself the, um, the task mm-hmm. of carving out that one hour for yourself at the end of every day? I feel good about it. I feel good about trying that because I know it's something that I need. Like it is, it's, it's something that I I do need. I think it's something that's going to just help me um, kind of just take a step back and, and kind of look in from the outside. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. So do you want this to be, like you've mentioned the end of the day, but you're also talking about how tired you are at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So when do you want, and maybe this is part of the experiment is figuring out when, but do you see this as being something at the end of the day where you have this time as you wind down or, or maybe it's in the morning? Mm. Uh, I'm going to have to figure that one out. I used to love reading. I found such joy in it. Like it was so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. So where do you imagine this happening? Like when uh, you when you imagine this having this like one hour for yourself, whether that's in the morning, whether it's at night or however you do it, but every day you've got this hour and it's like Zoe time. Like where do you imagine this could happen? Like, what would it take to allow you to like step away from whatever to say, okay, this is my time. Mm, I can always get the girls to go down to the game room or, you know, go and do something together, just them, you know, or I can start taking baths again. I have a great idea get a nice bath pillow and uh what if while you're taking your time that the rest of the people in the house clean up that's a good thing that would make you feel great oh that would make me feel so good (laughs) that would make me feel so good So you're suggesting like, instead of the kids going to the pool or the game room, like you go to the pool yeah, and you step out for an hour and the kids are at home with whoever's at home. And I was even talking to Uncle Daniel too. I want one of those little book lights. I can go sit in the sauna. I wish they had a hot tub downstairs. A hot tub would be so nice. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, we've talked about so many of the different things tonight, but um, I guess, you know, feeling all the feels, this is what, this is what it means, right? It means tuning in, noticing. Um, and, you know, I think it's really neat that, you know, you've been thinking about, you know, how to take care of yourself and you've come up with a couple of things. Yeah. Just gotta, I gotta put them in, in drive and do it. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the main thing. I just got to balance everything out, figure out the best time to take that hour out of the day and um, mm-hmm. do something for myself. Yeah. I love it. It'll I love be nice. it. And it's just an hour. Yeah. Just an hour. Right. And we know that the kids are safe. They're at right. home. There's people there. Mm-hmm. And right. And it's, it's an opportunity for you to um, unplug from cleaning, not have to think about being a parent. This is the time where you get to just step away and have a bit of time for yourself, whether that's to read a book, sit in the sauna, go for a swim, go for a walk, write in your journal, talk on the phone whatever you want to do i love it i think this is gonna 
this is going to be good. Having this hour is really, you know, going to let me put things into perspective about everything. And I'll be able to hear myself think, you know, and it's not going to be so clouded with, with frustration and little things that bother me. I'll be able to really reflect on that. And mm -hmm. I think that would be something really good, not only for myself, it'll be good for me to do myself, but it'll benefit my kids and Daniel, they won't have to hear me bitch so much about all these little things that are so meaningless sometimes, you know, they seem like such big things, but really they're, they're not, they're good problems to have <laughs> mm -hmm. a lot better than the problems that I had before. So the problems that, you know, all the little things, you know, when I, now that I'm sitting down talking about them, instead of being frustrated with them, I should appreciate them almost, you know, like you think about little things like how frustrated I get when my kids crawl into bed with me every night and I'm squished. But then <laughs> when you sit there and think about it, in a few years, it's not going to happen anymore. So those little things that I get so upset with and frustrated with, I should just appreciate them while they're still here and, and doing those things. You know, that's such a nice example of um, <clears throat> something called savoring. Mm -hmm. That's what you've just described. You've just described savoring. And there's a lot of research to support that the more we savor our moments, the better we feel. So in those moments where the kids are, you know, smushed <laughs> up against you and, you know, and it's warm and yeah. there's not enough room to like, you know, stretch out and you may say, yeah. And, and, and you, what you choose to, to focus on is like, Hey, I've got the two kids in the bed. We're all here. Yeah. We're all together. I can feel her leg and I can feel her leg and we're all <laughs> snuggled up. And I'm savoring this moment because I'm so glad that we're here together in this yeah. bed, all smushed up. And let me just like feel it for a minute yeah. and tell myself how much I wanted this to happen. And now it's happening. And as you're savoring it, it brings up all of these good endorphins and feelings yeah. in that moment. Right. And you can still be like, Hey, move over, <laughs> <laughs> move over, but don't get out. <laughs> it's savoring. Right. And when you yeah. get that hour to yourself, whatever you choose to do, right. You might just sit there and savor the fact that you're sitting with a book Yeah. and maybe you don't even read the book. Maybe you just savor the fact that, Hey, I'm sitting with a book. <laughs> yeah. I made it. I stepped out of the apartment. I, you know, here I am. This is me having my alone time and I got a book. Yeah. And you might look at the cover and go, Hey, that's a great cover. And you might not even crack the book <laughs> open, but you'll savor the moment. Yeah. 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 That's good. So, you know what, Zoe, I, I hope the rest of your week includes some savoring Thank and you. some, you know, some downtime. I am going to be practicing both of those things this week. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And we can you can make the appointment to go see Vita Nova and you can tell them everything that you talked about today. And who knows what they're gonna say. Maybe they're gonna jump on board and say, Zoe, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll have some options. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to message Rosanna and just see if we can do our one-on-one -on -one Thursday still and uh, go from there, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I really do. I enjoy the one-on-ones that I have with her. So I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out. I'll send her an email and, and see what she says and then go from there. And I'll practice savoring and downtime this week. <laughs> Okay, guys, you know what, you know what time it is? Time for your outro. Ooh. Are you ready to do it? No. Do you want me to step away and you can just do it on your own? Can I do the outro? Yeah. 
Okay. Here's the outro. Dennis, I just want to tell you what an amazing job Zoe's doing. And I am so very proud of her. She is juggling a lot. She's feeling all the feels. She has so much determination right now. And sometimes her determination to get it all right and to do it all is adding pressure. And she's really feeling the weight of that, trying to be the right daughter, trying to be the right mother, trying to be the right podcaster, trying to be the right niece, trying to be it all. And I'm so very proud of her. And today she was a bit, she took a chance in talking about it. And I think we're learning how to support her better. And she's not in it alone. And she doesn't have to be strong every day. And I think that's what today was about. It was about, you know, when we asked her what she needed for support, she didn't know. But I think through this conversation, we're discovering this is how we help one another. Thank you. <laughs>